Hello and welcome to probably the like oh my god this video is going to be insane. Obviously Spider-Man is my favorite superhero and I have like a list of video ideas right and the Spider-Man ranking has been it was the first one on that list and I put it there maybe six seven months ago so I'm finally getting around to it and I'm just putting a warning here that my opinion is solely based off of how much fun I have when I watch the movie I am in no way ranking oh this one is the best written therefore this is going to be number one no right so I am purely going to go off the, the movies that I have the most fun with and of course I will justify why so please do not kill me right but last place actually before I say that also one thing I have to say is that there is not a single movie on this list that I despise right um because if you like were to force me to watch any of these then I wouldn't have a problem basically I like all the movies I don't know why I'm rambling on so much let's start off with last place which is Spider Man 3 now listen all right I said it that there's not a single movie that I don't like and that is true and Spider-Man 3 I'm pretty sure is like my most watched out of all of them because I loved Spider-Man 3 when I was like what six seven um, I absolutely loved it uh, obviously now that I'm much older I realize what a disgrace the movie was to the character of Venom but the one thing that knocks all the Raimi movies down for me is Mary Jane I don't th I'm not saying it like as a joke I genuinely hate her character I cannot watch the movies and that is why Spider-Man 3 is in last place I, I cannot stand her she's so annoying she ruins the entire movie and the way people go on about the Raimi trilogy as if oh it's God tier they're perfect no they're not perfect Mary Jane Watson is the worst character in Spider-Man history so uh, yeah Spider-Man 3 very messy, mainly because obviously the studio forced Sam Raimi to put the story of Venom in. Um, but yeah, I actually, I, I do still like Spider-Man 3. And now for this next one, oh dear. Number 11 goes to Spider-Man 2. Listen, 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 all right? I know, I get it. People act as if this is the best superhero movie of all time. Okay, hear me out. I said that I'm basing this list off of, you know, the things that I had the most fun with. All right. And just when I was little, Spider-Man 2 wasn't really on that much. So all I could remember, but that's the only thing that I remember about the Raimi movies is the villains. Because I was like, oh yeah, Dr. Octopus is in that one. Spider-Man 2, it just pisses me off, mainly because Mary Jane is in it so much. Again, not a joke. These movies are literally just there to make me angry. I cannot stand her. Spider-Man 2 would be so much better. And also, one overrated sequence, which I'm obviously playing over this right now, is the train sequence. There's really nothing that fantastic about it, you know? It literally just serves the purpose of the iconic shot of Spider-Man stopping the train. The, the, the scene itself isn't that amazing, guys. So, yeah, I mean, obviously, I'm not really a massive fan of this movie. Like, I know some people are. If you like it, then I'm happy for you. At least you can enjoy it. I, personally, I just can't. I can't. The only, the only sign of happiness that um, I get from this movie is Dr. Octopus. Because I love the character of Dr. Octopus in this film. The rest of it, eh, it's okay. So yeah, um, there's that. And now number 10 goes to Spider-Man from 2002. Yes, I put the Raimi trilogy at the bottom of my list. I'm a criminal. All right. I don't care. All right. If I didn't really have that much fun watching the movies, then just leave me be. But Spider-Man 1 from the time, like from the time I started watching movies, Spider-Man 1 was my favorite one just because I love the character of Green Goblin. I, I love Willem Dafoe. And 
I don't know what it was, but everything else about the movie, not just the villain, it, it actually interested me. I don't know, Spider-Man 1, it just has a sense of charm to it, which is probably why people love the Raimi movie so much, but I don't know, th this movie, it still has that ridiculous layer of camp um, that the rest of the trilogy had, but that's not exactly the movie's fault, you know, um, but yeah, you know, this movie, it, it it's decent, it's definitely my favorite of the trilogy, as I've, you know, said before. Hence why it is in number 10 and not number 11 or 12. So yeah, um, th that's really all I have to say about Spider-Man 1. I love Green Goblin, that's basically it. Yes, I am obviously counting the Sony movies, uh, you know, in this ranking. Hence why there's 12 films and not like 7 or whatever it is. So, in ninth place goes to Venom Let There Be Carnage. Now. The reason why I put this below the other movies is because of the potential this film had. I loved the first Venom movie. I had it like when I got my first Lego set, I was building it and just on the TV, I just had Venom 1 playing on repeat. When the movie finished, I uh, restarted. I love Venom 1. Venom 2, it, it was way too comedic, you know? Um, I obviously was very excited to see Carnage, um, but I feel the, the movie surrounding him was just too goofy. You know, it was the same problem with Gore from Thor Love and Thunder. He would have been a great character, but every but the movie surrounding him, the movie he, that he was in was too goofy. It wasn't the right film for him. The movie was pretty fun to watch, you know, in the cinema. But afterwards, I was like, eh. <laughs> even to this day, the movie is like over a year old now, and I still have not rewatched it. And for me to not rewatch a movie, it, it's uh, honestly, I mean, again, like I said, I don't dislike it, but it's definitely my least favorite of the Sony um, spin-off films. So now that leads into number eight, and people are going to stab me for not putting this in last place. Last place goes, oh, wait, what? No, 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 no. Eighth place goes to Morbius. Yes, I know. <sighs> I have a lot of explaining to do with this one. I went to go see Morbius with like no expectations, right? I didn't go in thinking, oh, this movie's gonna be shit. I didn't go in thinking this movie was gonna be amazing. I was just like, you know what? I'm just gonna go watch it and let's see what happens. And you know, the, the film, it wasn't, it, it wasn't that terrible. I don't understand why people treat it like it's the worst thing in the world. And I'm not gonna go here. I'm just, I'm not gonna go, oh, it's Morbin time. No, no, no. I freaking hated that whole joke. You know, I'm one of the few people who actually wanted to take Morbius seriously and look at it and not talk about it in meme form. So yes, Morbius definitely, um, they definitely screwed up with this film because the trailers obviously misled us a lot, having Spider-Man in a lot of the things, but Spidey, nothing was in the movie related to that. Yes, the Daily Bugle still stayed the same, but really Vulture was the only thing kept in the movie. And even then he was shoved to the most illogical post credit scene ever. And I'm going to be honest with you, that was the most fun I had watching a post credit scene in the cinema. Like I like when I left the cinema, I was like, that, that was the best post credit scene ever. But then it hit me like it hit me like a tsunami, the logic, because I was like, wait a second. The No Way Home spell didn't work like that. So yeah, it, it took me a couple minutes to, to put my thoughts together. But yeah, I mean, Morbius, it wasn't God awful. Just if you're gonna watch it, don't expect too much. Number seven actually goes to Spider-Man Homecoming. Technically the first MCU film I ever saw. Now, before watching this, I had absolutely no interest in all these superhero things. You know, you're like, oh, if people were saying, oh, do you like Batman? I'm like, no, I don't care. Do you like Iron Man? No. Captain America? No. I didn't care about it. However, 
I had obviously been watching the Spider-Man movies since I was like a toddler. So obviously, when I saw that a new Spider-Man film was coming out, I was like, oh, okay, cool. Let me go watch this. And I saw Iron Man and I was like, what the fuck? <laughs> this is not Spider-Man. Um, but obviously, you know, the I had to try and just deal with it that this was a whole in interconnected universe. So when I tell people that Thor The Dark World was the first MCU movie I watched. I'm technically lying because this was. Thor The Dark World was the first one I watched when like knowing that this is a part of the whole Marvel thing. Here, I, I thought it was gonna be a separate universe, you know, just, just like Toby, just like Andrew. So yeah, I mean, I actually, I really liked Spider-Man Homecoming. Uh, I think it's definitely, it's very underrated. Uh, it's kind of criminal actually. And you know, before No Way Home, I could kind of understand why people didn't like it, but obviously after seeing No Way Home, you understand how Peter has grown as a character from Homecoming to now, you know, starting off as he couldn't do anything without the technology. And now obviously at the end of No Way Home, he is like all by himself. So yeah, Spider-Man Homecoming, a pleasant introduction that I had to the MCU. And you know, I actually really did like this movie. Liz was probably the worst part, actually, if I'm being honest, because she was like the one love interest that I always forget about. Anyway, moving on to sixth spot. Sixth spot goes to Far From Home. And you know what? This, I think, is the most underrated of the Spider-Man movies, because I really don't understand people's problem with the movie. I It's fun. You know, it, it's funny. And there's like a lot of things where, uh, even Mysterio, okay, let's just talk about the one thing, is Mysterio. Obviously, going in to watch this, I did not know Mysterio. The only movie, vil the only Spider-Man villains I knew were the ones from the movies. You know, like Venom, Sandman, Dr. Octopus, Green Goblin, whoever. So, I didn't know that Mysterio was going to be a villain. However, that means nothing because I know a lot of people who watch this movie and they, they knew Mysterio was a villain, but they bought into his bullshit. They thought that he was telling the truth. That just proves how good the movie is. God, honestly, Far From Home, I think, I, 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 like, if you're watching this, right, and you do not like Far From Home, please tell me why, because I genuinely don't understand. <laughs> you know, we have a great Spider-Man, we have an, a fantastic love interest, a great villain. You know, the comedy isn't over the top, and it was cool having Spider-Man in a different location, you know? So, yeah, I love Far From Home. So, there is that. Moving on to number five. Number five goes to Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse. I cannot tell you how much I despised the look of this movie when it came out. I was like, an animated Spider-Man movie, that sounds terrible. So, I didn't go and see it in the cinemas. Because I was under the impression, oh, and you know, animated movies now are just so bad. So it eventually came onto TV and I recorded it. I was like, you know what? Fine. All my friends are saying this movie is so good. Let me just watch this. And holy shit, I was, I was so happy to be proven wrong. I love Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse. Now, as you can see, we, now that we're in the top five, now we're getting to like the, I love this movie. <laughs> So yeah, Into the Spider-Verse, I think, is something that we definitely needed because it's something different. You know, a lot of the Spider-Man movies are kind of, you know, repeat, well, repetitive, you know, whereas Into the Spider-Verse, it was very, very different. And all of this, all these different versions of Spider-Man, you know, being together was just so cool. It was also really nice to have a character, like a main character who wasn't Peter Parker. Even though obviously Peter Parker is, you know, he is Spider-Man. Miles Morales was, <laughs> he was fantastic. I'm so excited. Honestly, when the trailer for Across the Spider-Verse came out, I was very disappointed because it was just a lot of shots from the first movie. So I wasn't that excited for Across the Spider-Verse. Then the second trailer came out yesterday and I lost my mind. I'm so excited for that film. You know, we, we get it on, I think it's the 2nd of June, and then literally a week later, Transformers Rise of the Beast comes out. So, oh my God, it's so cool. So yes, 
Into the Spider-Verse, phenomenal movie. Now we're getting into the point where people definitely are not going to agree with me because these are my favorite movies. So number four goes to The Amazing Spider-Man 1. Now, you know, I'm going to be honest, until like re-watching all the Spider-Man movies in anticipation for No Way Home, I didn't remember anything from this film other than the lizard was in it. Because I think I watched it once when I was like maybe eight, eight, seven or eight. And then I didn't watch it for many years. So I didn't really remember anything from it. Um, and then re-watching it, you know, in, in anticipation of No Way Home, I just realized how amazing this movie is. And, you know, obviously the original, you know, the 2002 film, it does the whole Spider-Man origin story really well. But I, 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 I like this fun more. I don't know. Andrew Garfield just brings a sense of charm that Toby just couldn't, you know? Well, not couldn't, because Toby's Spider-Man was still... Well, he, Toby was a great Peter Parker. Andrew Garfield is the best Spider-Man, in my opinion. You know, spy, like he, he is the best Spider-Man. I know everyone has their opinions. Mine was Andrew Garfield. And it just annoys me how people just slept on him for so long. You know, Andrew, they were like, oh, who's your least favorite Spider-Man? A lot of them will say Andrew Garfield. Um, what's your least favorite Spider-Man movie? Oh, Amazing Spider-Man 2. Amazing Spider-Man. They just want to kind of forget that era. And it annoys me because that was probably my favorite era of Spider-Man. You know, I always loved Andrew Garfield. And that's why I was so happy that they revealed him first in No Way Home. I, oh, my God. But anyway, we're getting off track. This movie is probably the best written Spider-Man film. Yes, I'm going to say it. Because it was very simple. There, it, there wasn't really a messy story. Put the whole, uh, you know, villain arc. Well, not arc. Dr. Connor's story, I think they fit it in well with everything that was going on in Peter's life. Um, you know, the whole thing that he was friends with his dad and everything. Uh, that was very, very smart. Emma Stone. Oh my God. Literally the perfect love interest. I don't care what you say, even though obviously I knew, you know, of course I knew Zendaya way before I heard of Emma Stone, but God damn it. Emma Stone's Gwen Stacy is probably the best love interest, not just in the Spider-Man movies, but probably one of the best love interests of any superhero film. She was just amazing. They, like, wow the chemistry between her and Andrew for obvious reasons you know um oh my god it's it's unmatched seriously that is one of the few things what that I can never stand about the Raimi trilogy is having Peter and MJ in a scene together but when when Gwen and Peter are in a scene together in Amazing Spider-Man oh I just get so happy I love seeing them together and that's what makes the ending of Amazing Spider-Man 2 even more heartbreaking Anyway, um, time to move on to the top three at last. Now, number three goes to Venom. Wow. <laughs> I honestly only wanted to see this movie because I was like, oh, it's the black Spider-Man. Because the only reason I knew Venom was from Spider-Man 3. And I knew nothing about the character, by the way. I knew absolutely nothing about him. So when I went to watch this movie... I was, I was like, oh, okay, let's just see what this is. I don't think I'd ever had that much fun watching a movie. Uh, that, that's a lie, because we all know what number one's going to be. But my God, Venom was just fantastic. I loved the comedy. It, w it was one, definitely one of the funniest um, movies that Sony has done. And, you know, obviously the film clearly wasn't that bad because it made like, what, $800 million? Which, you know, I wish Let There Be Carnage could have been as good. But this is this movie is the reason why Let There Be Carnage was so disappointing. It's because the first Venom movie was fantastic. I absolutely loved it. And you know what I don't understand, right? When people complain about this movie, they're like, oh, the final battle is just a CGI mess. And I'm like, what do you think it's supposed to be? 
obviously they goopy aliens fighting each other all right do you want to go to space and find a bunch of goopy aliens so they can fight no so just shut up and deal with it obviously they're made of goop and they're cgi so what do you think it's gonna be fucking idiot if i was to have like one nitpick i would have had raya to be a bit more of a prominent character but i'm glad that the movie opened with him and you know just the way he went out holy shit venom literally just blew up the rocket venom literally just blew up the rocket it was so cool um yeah so the first venom movie i have so much fun watching this film even up until this day and i absolutely love it now we move to number two which is definitely gonna be last place on most people's list Number two goes to the amazing Spider-Man 2. Please, please do not come for me. All right, let me explain. Let me explain. All right. So this is probably my most watched superhero film. I loved this movie when it came out. Because we actually did go and see it in the cinema. Um, I loved this movie when it came out. And I just always had so much fun watching it. You could say it's messy, all right? I don't care. But there hasn't been a single time when I was watching this film and thought, oh God, this is too much for me to handle. No, you know, I think that they handled everything very well. It's just that this was the setup movie, you know? It was a setup for Amazing Spider-Man 3, which unfortunately never happened. That's why this movie, you know, by itself isn't that fantastic. But this to this day will always be my favorite spider-man solo film i love it with all my heart because not not only by the way this film has the best spider-man suit as well in my opinion the tasm 2 suit is just beautiful the the bug eyes the colors oh it's so beautiful to look at the villains as well you know electro i god i love him and also People who say that Electro isn't comic accurate. Do your research, my friend. Because if you were such a big comic fanatic, then you would know that in the Ultimate Spider-Man comics, Electro is indeed blue. So, you know, this is technically comic accurate. New Goblin, he, he was okay. I think he, he definitely would have been cooler if, you know, Amazing Spider-Man 3 actually did happen. But that doesn't really matter rhino is still absolute garbage we all know this amazing spider-man 2 also probably has the best soundtrack i'm gonna be honest with you i absolutely love this uh like i just love listening to the music electro's theme oh my god i don't know why i'm surprised this movie has the best music because hans zimmer was the composer i will always love this movie until the day i die and oh wow they also handle the emotions very well in this movie. You know, like certain scenes, characters don't just like brush past it. You know, like when Spider-Man says that he's not giving Harry his blood. That is 100% how someone would react. Harry would just start throwing stuff around. And I'm like, you know what? Yes, it is kind of childish, but that is how someone would react. Oh my God, as well. The ending. Oh, oh. That gets me every single time when Andrew is, just, well, Peter, uh, uh, forgive me if I say Andrew, when Peter is just looking at Gwen after she hit the ground. God, that is just absolutely heartbreaking. Oh, also, let me, let me tell you something. Uh, one thing I know people hate about this movie is that they think, oh, Peter, it was Peter's destiny to become Spider-Man. No, it wasn't his destiny to become Spider-Man. All right, just because the spider, like the whole thing was with his DNA. Yes, he's the only person who could become Spider-Man. But that doesn't mean it was his destiny to become Spider-Man, you know? Because I know that's what people, you know, that's what we love about Spider-Man is that he could, anyone could have been Spider-Man. Anyone could have been bitten by that spider. But it happened to Peter Parker. But yeah, the fact that it, the whole thing was with his DNA doesn't mean that it was his destiny. All right. It just means he was the only one who could have been. He easily could have lived his whole life without becoming Spider-Man. But that's not what happened. It was just a coincidence. 
that he went into the lab. And that is the magic of Spider-Man, is it not? It was a coincidence that Peter Parker was the one who got bitten. That is enough of me praising this movie. It is now time for me to praise my number one. And that obviously is Spider-Man No Way Home. Oh my God. Where do I even start with this thing? First of all, let's just talk about the, the hype behind it. Obviously, the No Way Home trailer, it, it's just insane. The teaser trailer, I'm pretty sure, is the most viewed trailer of all time. Unrelated, but Transformers Rise of the Beast is number four. Paramount, release the fucking trailer now. And obviously, you know, a lot of people's favorite part was the Hello Peter. Mine obviously was Green Goblin, because Green Goblin was always my favorite villain. And of course, we all heard the rumors of Toby and Andrew coming into the film. But even, oh, when Andrew showed up, when Andrew showed up, right, I honestly did not even notice it. Because it was quite dark, and obviously, you know, the 3D glasses don't help. But my sister was saying, oh, she could see, the, she would, she could see um, his eyes. And obviously, watching the movie now, you know, obviously I could see that, you know, his eyes were pretty visible. But as soon as he jumped through the portal, oh my god. Never in my life had a cinema clapped. Nobody has ever clapped. I know a lot, of, like around the world, people scream and clap in the theater a lot. Never happened to me. But for No Way Home, that was the first time in my life when Andrew jumped through that portal, people clapped. And they stood up. Oh my god. This was the most fun I ever had watching a film. And yes, there is a lot of fan service in this movie. But oh, it was handled very, very well. And before I carry on with that, I also want to say this movie made me like Tobey Maguire's Spider-Man. So now I may carry on. People say the, the writing for No Way Home was shit. Let me tell you what they did with this film, all right? They, first of all, they had to find, you know, a smart way to take the ending of Far From Home and lead it into all the villains coming into this universe, right? That's not an easy thing to think of. Then, of course, they had to, you know, create a conflict, you know, and obviously that conflict was that Doctor Strange wants to send them back to their universes and Peter wants to help them. And, you know, that is so smart. But then not only that, of course, they gave closure. They gave closure to a lot of different characters, you know. Obviously, well, actually all the villains technically they gave closure to. There is no film that I have seen, okay, other than Jurassic World. There is no movie I've ever seen that I could say is perfect. Well, not a live action movie anyway. But I can comfortably say that in my humble opinion, Spider-Man No Way Home was perfect. This movie is, I hold it so close to my heart because just what it was able to do and how they were able to do it so flawlessly. You know, seeing all, because, you know, obviously most of us were there to witness all of these heroes in, you know, their related movies. All the way from Spider-Man 2002 to Spider-Man Far From Home, we had seen Toby, we had seen Andrew, we had seen Tom Holland, but we never could have dreamed to see all of them in one film. And of course, the villains, you know, obviously seeing Green Goblin back, it, it really did just it even elaborates on my point of how good the writing is for No Way Home because they brought the whole thing full circle. You know, this whole live action thing started with Norman Osborn being the first, well, Green Goblin being the first villain. And now we've wrapped it up with him being the villain again. Well, the, the main villain anyway. I've seen No Way Home nine times. I need to, well, including the extended version, I've seen it nine times. I need to watch it one more so I can get it double digits. But yeah, I honestly could go on and on and on and on about how much I love this film. But that is just going to make this video infinitely boring. So there you go. There was my ranking of all of these Spider-Man related movies. Thank you for sitting through what's probably like 20 minutes 
of me talking. <laughs> but I appreciate it. So if you are seeing this, please, you know, leave your ranking down below and tell me, you know, how, how, how bad was my opinion? But if you did for some reason enjoy, leave a like, subscribe and goodbye.